Our season of Monster Hearts Recount deals with subject matter that some may find uncomfortable, such as underage sex and substance use, vampire age gaps, coercion, and violence. Always check the show notes for additional content warnings and feel free to check out the transcript for each episode available at therealmscast.com. Previously on Many Realms. Anna's rowing team slash hive mind is unbalanced after the events of the beach party. Evan tells Anna to ask Riri why everyone is so upset. In science class, Mina claims Declan as her partner for a project, forcing Gwen and Riri to pair up for an uncomfortable blood typing lab to come. Anna and Riri catch up at the cafe, but when Anna starts questioning Riri's actions at the party, Riri gets upset and storms out. Declan and Gwen hatch a scheme to print their campaign as a rogue zine insert for the newspaper, but to pull this off, Declan distracts Elizabeth with his awkward charms, leaving Gwen hurt, thinking about how her crush must be unrequited. Hi, I'm Jory. I'm playing Declan the Selkie, and it's good to be here. Hey, what's up, Realmers? It's me, one of your five options for your favorite members of the Realm cast. It's Jordan, and I play Riri the Vampire, and it's good to be here. <laughs> Hi, I'm Eli. I play Anna the Queen, and it's good to be here. And I'm your favorite Realmer. Hi, I'm Jesse. I play Gwen the Fae, and I think that I'm middle of the road, right down there, average, and I've made my peace with that. Hello. It's good to be here. Hi, I'm Jillian. I'm the MC for this campaign, so that means Mariah Carey, and it's uh, good to be here. I should, I should sing, but you can't make me. Welcome to Many Realms. September 29th, 1994. Whitfield Bay is not a place you go on purpose, unless you're a logging company. Most tourists stop at Gibson since that's where they shot the beachcombers. Nothing here has been updated in around 20 years. A tragedy, because the 70s weren't exactly the pinnacle of design. A few years back, there was a proposal from Old Pine Real Estate Development Company to build a big hotel up by the bluffs, but Concerns over deforestation of an ancient rainforest and First Nations land rights snuffed that idea before it was more than a spark. Big companies have been trying to strangle life here for so long that most people can't picture life any other way. Every year, the sign that welcomes people to Whitfield Bay gets more and more faded. And maybe one day, those who drive by on the highway won't even know we're here. It's morning, Anna, you are ready for school, you have the saxophone you rented with you to impress Harmony, and on your way out the door, your dad catches you and is like, oh, hey, princess, what is that? Pointing at the saxophone. Her dad calls her princess. I nailed it with my mocking taunts. <laughs> uh, princess is a compliment. Hello. <laughs> She's like, Oh, this? Um, I'm gonna try out for band. You're gonna add another extracurricular to your schedule? Yeah, I just thought it would, like, really round me out and kind of add to my skills, you know? Well, Anna, you know that we invest a lot into the rowing team, and with you on your path to becoming student council president, I don't need you getting distracted. Oh, well, I... Have it all under control. Um, I'm gonna tell you, I'm still the captain, and um, the team's been doing really well. So I haven't even gotten on the band yet. First of all, I don't think you're like you're not like a mu musical person, are you? No, but Anna kind of thinks she can do just whatever. Well, Anna, if you wanted to do music, you should have told us years ago. Otherwise, we could have put you in lessons. We could have gotten you the best teachers, and now you want to go play around with the little school band? Oh my god, dad, I'm not here to like, B 
be a conductor or whatever for life. I'm just trying to do new things and have fun. You probably did that when you were like a teenager, whatever that was, right? God, no. <laughs> well, it's not going to be an issue because I'm going to be good at this too. Anna's like irritated getting in her car. <laughs> Like, is my dad going to lecture me anymore? He probably would, but you're allowed to leave. He um, watches you drive off from the steps of your large house with his arms crossed. Classic. He only ever sees me off to go to school when he's annoyed at me. Doesn't it suck when your child rebels by joining the band? <laughs> yeah. She's got some nerve. Yeah. Okay, let's hop on over to, to the band room. Well, it's not the band room. It's currently used as the band room. It's the art room which still has scorch marks from uh, where Jocelyn burnt the ballot box. And Harmony meets you there. Harmony, of course, is uh, the person you've been flirting with. You saw them busking with their brother, their twin brother, and you were like, I want to get some of that to expand my hive mind. Um, so yeah, Harmony is waiting for you outside of the room, and uh, they kind of light up when you come around the corner. Aww. Hey, you made it. Hey. Yeah, of course. Did you think I was kidding? Like a little. <laughs> Anna flashes her fancy sax, which is maybe like as nice or nicer than Harmony's, which is a little annoying. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, big flex. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, she's like, what can I say? You just sparked an excitement in me. Oh, wow. You seem really serious about this. Does, like, everyone watch the audition, or is it just, like, a one-on-one -on -one sitch? The guys were gonna come uh, and watch, too. The guys being Jeremy, Harmony's twin, and uh, David. They're not here yet. And at that point, Crystal shows up, and Crystal's the head of drama. Right. And, uh... I'm not going to have a conversation with myself back and forth, but... <laughs> I wish you would. It always, you know, gets works for me and <laughs> makes me insane. But uh -huh. yeah, Crystal, Crystal shows up. She's wearing um, a turtleneck and a beret. She goes off about how... Um, actually, the drama club has this room booked right now. And Harmony's like, no, like, band is always... Always here in the morning, actually. Crystal's like, no, I, like, made an exception. Like, we got in the schedule. And they have a big fight. And there's some there's some weird tension between Crystal and Harmony that it's very confusing. Like, they publicly seem to hate each other, but it's got to be more to it than that. I'm kind of pursuing this music club Harmony thing, so I'm going to side with her and try to uh, kick Crystal out, maybe score some extra brownie points. What are you going to do? Um, I'll just get between them and be like, I don't know what schedule you're looking at, but I'm looking at a schedule that says that the music club is in here right now, and a bunch of people co are coming in to audition, even if you did manage to kick us out, so. Okay, I want you to roll to shut someone down. Ten. Okay. <laughs> Push around the rocks. Yeah. <laughs> I can't always do that. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna take a string on Crystal. Okay. Or as I see that I'm kind of like winning this, I think Anna will try to like detract her claws back and kind of put on that like sweet personality again. The like, now that she's gotten her way, it's like, I'm sorry. I'm also getting a lot of heated. I just there's a lot of tension in this room, but I think it would make more sense, you know, because we're already here. And let's not. Make this a thing. Crystal narrows her eyes at you, does a huge dramatic sigh, flips her hair, and walks out of the room, giving you the finger. <laughs> Harmony kind of looks at you sheepishly and says, uh, thanks for that. Um, I think she probably did have the room booked, but uh, I just really wanted you to audition. Oh, Anna gives her uh, that look that's like, Oh, whoopsie, like, we're so bad, he, um, and then, you know, segues back into her cool self and is like, wow, I'm gonna make this a really good audition. And that's exactly where I wanted to use a string, if you'll let me. Amazing, okay. Um, I use a string on my saxophone to make it be tempted to play <laughs> good music. Uh, I have a string on harmony, I would like to use it so that they are a little bit softer on me on judging if I'm bad. 
it's kind of like a well i like you and i want you to be on band so <laughs> are you you're like <laughs> i have the image of you sitting in the like hardback molded plastic chair trying to like work your way through hot cross bun <laughs> and it's not it's not going so you stand up and sort of like swan up to the judge's <laughs> table like you're an american idol contestant that wants to make a splash <laughs> I'm the Clay Aiken. My, yeah. <laughs> my charm is half of the reason you want me. After after you finish warming up, the guys do actually show up. So you have a panel of three judges in front of you to audition for band. Harmony gives you like a double thumbs up. Anna really is, I think, genuinely secretly growing quite a soft spot for Harmony. Like I said, I'd like to use a string um, to sway Harmony a bit. I assume this is a roll. I don't know how good is your how good is your saxophone playing. I don't know what the threshold is for the band. I think I don't know how we want to interpret this, but it is very like you got promise. You know she's got the natural rhythm, but you know she also just picked up the saxophone. Mm hmm. Why don't you roll vote for me on the guys? Seven. You play your audition song, and it is like, okay. And the three judges huddle and confer. You see Harmony gesturing emphatically, probably is like a, come on guys. The three of them turn to you and Harmony says, okay, you can join, but you need to get better, like <laughs> pretty fast and we have to do something about this room. If we need extra practices to, to get you on our level, maybe you can help us out with the scheduling and Crystal and... Anna is like super excited. I think I want to say that part of Anna's charm is that like she often seems very like cool, collected and like very hard to reach. And she has this way of like in private when she is like warm or excited like this or shows her emotion it like it kind of makes you feel like you know oh this is like a special bond we have do you know what i mean like but she is like very excited and she's like yes thank you so much oh my god you don't even know how happy this makes me i will practice so much and yes i will be in here you just tell me if you need me to tell crystal to like suck a dick and fuck off i will do it i am your girl for this i'm psyched Jeremy turns beet red and says nothing. Harmony <laughs> um, gives you a hug. I hug Harmony back and I'm very excitedly like, so does this mean we get to practice more together? Yeah, you need it. <laughs> That's true. Yeah. Let's leave it there. As my first presidential order, I would like to request that Crystal suck a dick and fuck off. <laughs> Uh, what else is happening? What is this flyer? What is the flyer that you stuck in the newspaper, Gwen? We talked about this a little bit off mic uh, and talked about Gwen and Declan's campaign platform, which included items like ensuring uh, vegetarian cafeteria items, maybe some perhaps controversial re-administration of the budget, especially like club's budget. We know the dad funds the rowing team. I was interested in sort of like debunking or like countering any specific platform points that Anna and Riri were offering. So I don't know if like we have any of those to work with, but in the broadest strokes, it's this like sort of zine style, like flyer that is stuck in the newspaper that's like, this is the platform that like is important this week and like you know we didn't we didn't have the privilege to have our platform printed in the paper but we still think it's important that you know and you know maybe if there's room and we think it's good like here's some reasons why the other platform is not as strong anna and riri are there any specific like platform points that you would have published in the newspaper last week let me look more sex <laughs> 10% of the annual blood drive goes to Riri. <laughs> <laughs> it's like 10% of annual blood drive disappears. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't think um, there's anything like specific platform wise, but there is uh, the big one is an article saying like Mr. Gale considering huge new wing to donate to the school or some shit like that. 
and it's like very thinly veiled like but only if my daughter's the president mm. um, right for sure so maybe we have like a little clause in there being like we have actual platforms and things we want to do they're just trying to bribe you to pad anna's resume or whatever yes we have some like fun issues that i think are more like fluff that like immediately get people's attention. There is straight up unlimited soda in the cafeteria. You can't. There's no way we can afford that. Um, well, we can offer it and then and and not have any intention of fulfilling. A politician it. wouldn't do that, Jordan. <laughs> and then um, more school spirit and events type things, so that we can have an amazing time. Yeah, it's like, like one, two uh, dances per semester, up from one. Yeah, something like I that. I feel like we like can also, rallies. with like a real part of our platform, could pretty easily be like, hey, we've been here for all, you know, four years, and sorry, does anyone know who Declan is? Yeah, yeah. How does he know what the school wants? How is he a proper representation of the school? You're going to so, smear Declan? Well, I mean, I, no, that's not really did. smear. Those are just straight facts. I think, like, the... <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's just the objective <laughs> truth. <laughs> How did they get my spaghetti video? <laughs> um, I think the three pillars of our campaign would be like nice one. Pillars. There's like our fun issues that we're covering that I kind of went over. Like, and then there's the like, it is kind of like, who the fuck is Declan? He just showed up one day. You've known my family and like, we already all know how to be the president of this school or whatever. And then the third one is like, the thinly veiled maybe more donations are coming my dad's still deciding i think i want you to roll vote for me to see how well received your flyer is nice and then and then roll it every for every single student or better yet, do it like Deadliest Warrior Simulation no! where it's like we ran we, a thousand we, we simulated a thousand battles <laughs> Yeah, that's a fail. Um, is there a way I can help you? I wish you would. Yeah, you should You should probably also roll. Eight. Jesse, what did you roll? I rolled a six. So I think I want to give both of you conditions. Yeah, because I think, I think this is kind of like shutting someone down in the form of like newspaper. And so I think for some people, it, it comes across poorly that you have like gone rogue in a sense is my condition i'm very cool and badass and subversive <laughs> and i support the free out of press but what's like the word for that uh like what would they think of us yeah i guess like sneaky untrustworthy or like undermining um, underhanded yeah i like underhanded the truth is that like they were underhanded in denying us the um, submission date, but then it becomes this like good, like he said, she said, like who do you trust, which is really fun. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so you both kind of get that sneaky underhanded label from some of the school gossiping about how you had to like sneak this in and that's like not proper politics. You have to follow the appropriate channels. I think some people are like, that was really cool, but... <laughs> Yeah, in terms of, like, this being a big move to, like, sway voters, um, I don't think it worked. Is is there, like, anybody that um, Declan or Gwen would like to either, like, directly talk to about their platform or, um, like, eavesdrop on? Probably, might, I might check in on Elizabeth because she also said some concerning stuff about having to rush home last night. Okay, let's, let's do that. Um... First thing in the morning when you arrive to school, Declan, you go to check on Elizabeth, who you presume is in the shop. Hey, you, you got home all right last night? Elizabeth, as always, stuffs her hands into the arms of her hoodie and, and just kind of like doesn't make eye contact and says, yeah, 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 don't, don't worry about it. Well, uh, thanks again for uh, helping me with the, uh, did I make a chess set? It happened so long ago. Did you, uh, did you see the paper this morning? Yeah, I did. Um, is that why you wanted to talk to me? Oh, shit. Ah, oh, fuck. No. No. I did need help with my chest at you, but, um, um, you know, Gwen thought it'd be a good idea to, um, uh, do that for a campaign, too, and... So you, you distracted me? You put Iara 
on my ass after I told you I'd had it up to here with bullies. And when Yara reads the fucking newspaper, who do you think she's going to tear to shreds, Declan? Um, I can, I can handle Yara for you. She's... I don't need you to fight my fights for me, but I also don't need you starting them. Uh, he did not. And by he, I mean I. Forgot about consequences to actions. Mm. <laughs> I always do. Declan is ex- is flustered, as is his way, I think. Hmm. Gosh, I have a string on Elizabeth. Let's immediately, this is an issue of like, not Declan maliciously trying to hurt Elizabeth, but it's a situation of, oh, wait, no, there are problems. I did not consider that this would hurt you. I'm going to try to tempt her to do what I want by pulling this string with just a apolo- like a pretty sincere apology. Like, I'm sorry I didn't even think of the ramifications for you. That's, I, I, I wasn't thinking I'm so sorry. She gives you a half smile and says, I forgive you, but only because you're cute. But if you don't think about other people, Declan, you're going to make a pretty shitty president. Ugh. Ugh. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm sorry it's this, so wrapped up in this campaign. Um, I'll do better. I mean, for what it's worth, I'm glad you did it, but you know how I feel about Anna and that circle. If you keep trying to take them down, maybe, maybe I can keep helping, but... Please don't get me in trouble like that again. Never again. You have my word. She holds out a pinky. Pinky swear. Don't you touch him. <laughs> okay, we'll leave that there. That's nice. Yeah. Riri and Gwen, what is happening? I want to talk to Mina. That's my first order of business. And Jordan? Uh, I would love to get uh, what would be the closest thing to combat, I guess, in the form of gym, gym class in third period at some point. Okay, great. Let's have Gwen snag Mina before classes start. So I walk into the library uh, like 15 minutes before class starts. They've just wrapped their chess club meeting and Mina is sitting at one of the cozy tables in a chair reading the school paper. And I sit in the chair next to her and just kind of like throw my head down on the desk in front of her and just go... Uh, <laughs> she, she just gently strokes your hair. Says, <laughs> rough day, babe? Read anything good in the paper lately? She uh, holds up your little zine flyer. Lucky I'm a published author. <laughs> hey, this is pretty cool. How'd you pull that off? A little bit of subterfuge. I don't like to uh, reveal all my secrets, but I don't know if it's going to have the intended effect. Yeah, but here in a couple whispers, some people are kind of pissed. His chestliness? Not a fan? I guess Leonard just like doesn't know what's in it for him and like for our club that's so narrow-minded of leonard who i really respect like can he think beyond him like that's so self-interested i don't know have you talked to him yourself has declan come by like i mean we did a circuit early on in the first campaign but we haven't really like refreshed and touched base again i was doing a little bit of um my own scheme. I know. I hate pressing the flesh. I'm not a politician, <laughs> Mina. That's like not me. I, I don't know. I mean, I can, I can talk to Leonard if you want. Yeah, if you can. I mean, that'd be great. Just help out with the effort. I, I don't know. If people aren't going to vote for us and they don't think that we are going to be the better like offer for the school, all we can do is like speak our case and try our best like i can't mind control people or like make them do what i want them to do and if that's not what they want it's not what they want but like that's not even what i wanted to talk to you about mina looks distracted for a second says oh uh what what did you want to talk about on friday you were talking about um quote unquote weird vibes yeah would these weird vibes happen to include someone having convinced themselves that they're a century old vampire? I want this to get like older and older as the campaign goes on. <laughs> <laughs> fucking little snitch, Declan. I don't know about vampires, Gwen. Um, I don't know. What it, whatever I feel is never very like specific. 
Sorry, is there a fam is there a vampire in Whitfield Bay? I mean, I could like think of a couple, but like a real vampire? I I just smirk and I'm like not my secret to tell, I guess. I <laughs> hope, you know, whoever thinks that they're a vampire can find the help they need and until then we'll all just get the extra garlic sauce on our fries. <laughs> you need to tell me who that is. Oh my god. What if she bite or what if someone whoever it is bites me? I don't know. If you want to find out, you had better talk to Declan. Well, we are partners for the science lab, so... Shove him into a locker for me, would you, if you get the chance? Oh? <laughs> I don't know. Okay, don't. But, like, I just can't understand what his deal is even a little bit. Like, sometimes I think that he, you know, might feel the feelings, you know, the feelings that you could feel that he might feel. And then other times I think he's just like totally like out at sea and I don't even know who I'm talking to or who I'm looking at. And I, I don't even know, how am I supposed to deal with that? And I'm have to like work with him every day on this campaign and he's starting to drive me crazy. Um, have you like ever met a teenage boy? I've tried my hardest not to, you know that. Yeah, so like, <laughs> no one's a mind reader, Gwen. Sometimes you just have to be honest. I don't know. What if I do that and he's like totally not into it and I read the whole thing wrong and then I'll just have to fling myself into the ocean <laughs> again. I'll get another fucking one of these. <laughs> she holds up her arm in a sling. Uh, well, don't hurt yourself over a boy. I don't know. Is it worth it? I do think that he's really special and it would be just like mortifying if it, if it was not the situation that I thought it could be. Like, that would- I would not want to be in that place. Well, what if today, when Declan and I are working on our science lab, I maybe send out some feelers? Okay, but these have to be, like, Carmen, Miranda, Hadamari, like, subtle, 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 put the B in subtle feelers, Mina, right? He can't, like, catch on to this. Look, I- I promised I wouldn't say anything. Good, okay. Keep it close to your vest, all right? I will try my darndest. I fumble around not looking for her hand and I grab it and I squeeze it and I go, thank you, now I can die. <laughs> okay, I heard some of you wanted a sports montage, so welcome to dodgeball day in gym class. Pick your teams. I do have an arm in a sling. <laughs> well, like whenever we're out, we go chat with, with uh, Gwen. <laughs> hmm, can I have Declan on my team? And Gwen not. I you feel like Seal would be good at dodging and not throwing. I'll, 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 sorry, I'll wreck on that. I'll be against Declan. I think that'll be more interesting. Uh, sure. I mean, there, there, there was definitely like some, uh, some giggles and appraising eye looks ups and downs, um, as you were designated A, Declan, and you were designated B, Riri. So paint me, paint me like a scene, like a moment where you want to like talk to someone. I mean, if I get like knocked out, I do want to, I do like have a conversation I want to be having with Gwen today, which is where'd you go? Kennedy slams a ball into your shoulder. Declan, you're out. You go and sit on the bench next to Gwen, whose arm is still in a sling. Dinner's at 0800. Sorry? It's like a like a prison. It's like we're in. Oh, Forget it. Okay. <laughs> Remember we watched The Great Escape. Steve McQueen. It's fine. Yeah, I think Gwen's just sort of like um, some people. I think liked the newspaper. Yeah. Um, Elizabeth said that she thought it was cool. I mean, maybe I was hoping for like the blood of the bourgeoisie to run in the halls of the school, but that might have been optimistic of me. I mean, might need more than a flyer. And two flyers or a sticker. Um, where'd you where'd you go last night? I thought we were supposed to hang out after. I just had to get home, Deck. Sorry, something came up. I mean, I'm sure you were fine because you were hanging out with Elizabeth, right? I mean, like we chatted for like a minute, and then I went to go find you. Chatted for like a few minutes, Declan. It's like fine. God, you told me to distract her. And. Lo and behold, you sure did. Gold star. Are you mad at me? No, Declan, I'm not mad at you. 
there's a lot of stuff going on this week and we just need to focus on the campaign okay okay we can focus on the campaign we should talk about that then maybe you should (laughs) try over chess club or i don't know can you impress these jocks can you do a flip join the chess club I don't know. I can't I can't think of anything right now. My arm is kind of hurting, so. Okay. I feel like I'm being shut down. Yeah, can you roll? Yeah, I should roll dice. Um, although I'm famously bad at it and famously not cold. Even when I, I'm trying to be mad, I'm still like making jokes. I think that's very Gwen. I failed the roll and I have a negative one cold, so I had a total of five. So I'd need to pull two strings to get it up to a mixed success. Sure. Why not? But that also seems like extremely vicious. But hey, episode four, let's do it. Um, how about um, I'm like, my shoulder's hurting and you like maybe try to actually like reach out and touch it and you're like, oh, like maybe is it like here? Can I feel? And just like when you touch me and put your hand on me, I just like fully like stand straight up and just like march across and like out of the gym to go get like a drink of water or whatever. Okay. Uh, and Declan, you get to give Gwen a condition. Moody. Moody is great. I also will get something from um, succeeding on a shut someone down roll. I can lose my string on you. Yeah, lose a string on me. Uh, I'd like uh, to have the opposing team, which um, whatever we crushed. Uh, come on, and they're and they're and they're not happy about it. Uh, and perhaps I'd like to have. Whether it's jostling the teams or whatever, but the opposing side, like a competitive opponents, maybe there's some of the rowing men and women. Uh, and I'd like to try and get them to vote for me by by gambling on the game that if we win, that I can get, get like as many of the team's votes as they will agree to get, which is like if a class of 20, if they all agree, like whatever, 10 to 15. I'm gonna, I wanna call bullshit on that. Declan is like, hey, that's messed up. Don't vote because you lost a bet. Why, Declan? Why, you sore loser? No, because they should be voting based off of our platforms or lack thereof. Or lack thereof. Um, well, I just think that I believe in my ideals so strongly that I can reinforce them here. That's dumb. Oh, is it? Okay, Declan, well, if that's how you feel, then you don't have to participate. I don't think anyone should participate. Okay, well, uh, you continue telling people how to think and feel. All right, you know what? Fine, let's just win this frickin' game of dodgeball. I think Evan is vocally against this betting thing and is siding with Declan. I think he I think he pipes up and it says like, no, Declan's right, like this is stupid and just just because you like can kick my ass at dodgeball doesn't mean I want you running the school. Riri drops the ball and, and leaves, I guess. Okay, you run into Gwen in the hallway. <laughs> Oh, I don't, I don't have time for that either. I'm just, uh, I'm getting out of here unless she stops me. Nope, you are clear to take off. <laughs> <laughs> Anna wanted to have class with Mina. Yeah, we have history together. Yeah, you do. Yeah, we do. <laughs> I think that when you let Mina go, the thing that you, that like Anna doesn't know is that she has like, is kind of psychically hungover like there's residual vibes. So I think I think when she gets like emotionally or physically close to someone, like she gets kind of that like bleed of their feelings and like doesn't really understand how, how to like explain that and feels like really weird about it. Yeah. Okay. Uh, well, we're in history class and I think I sit down beside Mina and she probably knows that it's me before she even looks up because she feels these weird vibes going off beside her. She doesn't look at you and she just says, to what do I owe the pleasure? She, Anna, gets a little closer to Mina and puts her chin in her palm and then affectionately uses the silly old nickname they add. Hey, dummy. (laughs) What do you want, Anna? Life on the other side, treating you good. What do you care? What? Can I just talk? We've drifted so far apart. Well, that usually comes at, like, a cost. What do you want? Okay. You know me, so I'm not gonna pull any punches and lie to you, and I'm not gonna play any games. 
I'm just going to talk to you because I have respect for you. And I hope that you have a little bit of respect for me too, and that means that you'll answer me. I know that Gwen is your best friend now, and that's fine. Not gonna, I'm gonna keep that separated out of this conversation. But do you even really support Declan as a candidate? Is it just because Gwen is your best friend and she wants you to? Look, Anna, you rely so much on your name and your connections. And sometimes it feels like you don't see the world outside of this stupid town. And Gwen gets that there is so much more out there and so much more that we could be doing here and that things don't have to be the same. And I don't want things to be the same. I want real change. And so do they. Well then, Maybe you didn't know me well enough when we were best friends because I want change too. I don't want to die in this shitty town. Do you really think that if you want to change in your life that whatever random platforms they're going to enact for a year in this nowhere town is actually going to change your life? I'm not being snarky. I'm actually asking, do you really think that siding with them is actually going to change your life? Yes. Not being under you has changed my life. And I want that to continue. I want to maybe gaze into the abyss. Okay. Um, <laughs> what do you do to gaze into the abyss? I guess I will pull on those weird vibes. Pull on that, like, psychic hangover and give her a hair of the dog, basically. Like, I, you were in my hive mind once. I can peek on in there if I really want to. Sure. I think if you, like, physically touch her... Um, That'll do it. So why don't you roll with dark to gaze into the abyss? My dark is so bad. She went from Roman to Ileana. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's bad. Snake That's eyes. a two. Okay, you touch Mina, and it just, it fucking hurts. <laughs> it feels like you got, like, electrocuted. Ow, what the fuck? Is that, either you did something to me, or you feel like that all the time. What the fuck? Yeah, I think Mina just, like, raises her hand and is like, Can I go to the bathroom? And just, like, leaves. I want to creep around her stuff. Okay. What are you looking for? Can I steal my pelt from Mina? Oh. Oh! Is that an- Do we think that's interesting? Yes. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I was originally looking for a diary, and I didn't even think of the pelt, but that's a great idea. Yeah, you'd, you'd like, win the election. That's extra great, because she was going to give it back today. I steal a pelt! Well, okay, so Anna goes in looking for a diary and finds something else interesting. Like, is it clearly a seal pelt? Yeah, I mean, maybe you think it's a piece of clothing, like a fur vest or something. It definitely has vibes, It, it has right? vibes. It has vibes, okay. Uh, then I take it, because it's got vibes. Okay. Uh, we'll call that there, then. Let's do some blood science. So we're going to move into the afternoon of our day. We're going to do some science projects. Mina meets Declan at his cave for their blood type lab. He's like, I think he's very flustered around Mina because he does not know what she wants. And he was like, please. Sure. She just saunters in, um, sits down on the edge of your bed uninvited and starts taking the paperwork out of her backpack. Yeah. Hi. Um, what did you, what did you want? You said the other day it wasn't about science. I just get it out in the open, please. Yeah, Declan, I, I want to get to know you. She sets the homework aside and she just says, um, tell me something about yourself. Um, I like Nirvana. Kurt Cobain's like really hot, right? He, well, like, he like was. I, 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 I thought he was hot. I mean, I don't know how you feel about like boys because like you're a boy, but like. Yeah, I mean, he was like the best musician of his generation. And, you know, poor Frances Bean is going to have to spend her life like not knowing who he was. She could have had. They like, have you seen the pictures of them together? They really looked like they were a happy family. Do you miss your family? Sometimes. Because it's kind of weird that you just like live here in a cave. <laughs> by yourself. What if you wanted to have like a girl over? You're just gonna like bring a girl that you have a crush on into your cave? 
if I wanted to, I mean, like, I guess I'd have to, if like, I don't know, is not something that's come up. <laughs> what, you don't have a crush on anyone? Jacqueline, haven't you noticed that like, girls are like really into you? Uh, he like takes a minute to pause and he's like, I guess Elizabeth, she said I was cute this morning and uh, there was a whole thing with Anna, but I thought she was just being weird. Because I think probably more people have crushes on you than you think. Subtle. <laughs> um, I don't really, I don't really think of you that way. I just kind of want my pelt back. I'm sorry. It's not about, it's not about me, Declan. I just think, um, there's like stuff going on around you and you're not like noticing and maybe that like hurts other people's feelings. Is it, I, Have you ever kissed anyone, Declan? Huh? Have you ever kissed anyone? I don't know. I've, yeah. What was it like? You should tell me about it. Normal. <laughs> the regular kind. Declan, you're so weird. You're the one being weird. You act like you don't like me, and then you start asking me really personal questions. Well, you know, Gwen is my best friend, right? Yeah, she was She was being weird today. Did she talk to you about that? We were supposed to watch, like, Yojimbo the other day, and we watched- Oh, is, is that what you do with Gwen? You, like, watch movies? I, I don't understand. Like, why can't she watch movies with whoever? Why is that your territory? Well, I just- I just thought that was something that, like, we really had in common, you know? I thought, I guess it made me feel special, Declan. I, I, I'm sorry. I think maybe you just, like, don't get it, and you don't understand, like, the world around you, and you can't even see that Gwen has a freaking crush on you. Oh, she dropped it. I get 75 <laughs> points, I think. Yeah, Declan, Gwen has a crush on you. And you can't even see it. And you have like all these other girls coming up to you and whatever. So yeah, don't you think that like hurts her feelings and maybe she wouldn't want to talk to you if you're off flirting with Elizabeth or whatever? Like, God, open your eyes. And she, she, didn't, she didn't say anything to me. I don't know. No, she's upset, know what to... Declan. That's upsetting. He is sad to have hurt his friend for sure. I I don't know what to tell you. I'm I'm. Didn't know. I'm sorry. I know I said I'd give your thing back today, but um, I have to be honest. I I don't have it. What? I don't have it. <laughs> what do you mean you don't have it? I don't know. It's always it's always in my bag. And Anna got weird in history class, and I had to go to the bathroom, and then I came back, and it wasn't there anymore. Does Anna have it? Maybe. I don't know. I don't want to talk to her. Well, I think I'm going to try and tempt her to do what I want. So I think I'm going to be like, well, you. so you came in, just started saying all this crap about me, and you, you lost it. Could you talk to Anna? I don't care about whatever you're talking about. Get it back from her. And in the meantime, I don't know. Maybe I'll watch some movies with Gwen. Okay, fine, whatever, Declan. But if you break that girl's heart, I'm gonna break your face. Uh, angrily prick my finger and put it in the slide. <laughs> Maybe, Riri, you go home to your empty mansion with your Alfred before going over to Gwen's house. Um, and I think there's uh, a note for you from your vampirants. <laughs> it's just a good word. Um, TM, TM, TM. <laughs> Thanks to Jesse for coming up with that one. Um, and uh, the note is just like, Dearest Rebecca, I trust you are well and adjusting to life in Whitfield Bay. You know, Beatrice and I have all the newspapers sent to us across the pond and we've been pleased that you've been keeping a low profile even when you're hungry. I write to you as a reminder of my visit. It will arrive Thursday so we can begin to prepare for the ritual. As you know, to create a new elite vampire such as yourself, an elder vampire's ashes must be the perfect age, as so now is the time. And you were chosen by the council to represent our family this century, so I do hope this opportunity is not wasted on you. Remember to choose your candidate carefully. We have much to discuss upon my arrival. Chin up, darling. Yours, Carmel. Okay, 
I put it with the pile of other letters from my vamp parents. Okay, cool. Uh, can I roll up to Gwen's? Yes. Gwen's house is a little bit, it's uh, tucked away on like a small side street and uh, walking up to it, it's definitely pretty. It's like kind of shabby. It's like not super well maintained. Like the lawn is like a little bit uh, patchy and there's um, like a couple of bikes that are just sort of like leaned lazily against like the front porch and not like rolled away or whatever. It's a little bit kind of unkempt. You hear the sound of small wheels on pavements as Riri riding her custom made board that she made in her own time comes down uh, your, 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 your driveway, perhaps nails a kick flip before oh so cleanly kicking on the, the, the heel side and grabbing the board and then knocking on the door. Absolutely nails that kick flip. Riri the vampire kick flip. From inside my living room, I'm like, that sounds like a perfectly executed kick flip. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I stand up and I answer the door, ready for the operation, doctor? Uh, Riri kind of half rolls her eyes and and nods. Are your parents there? Do I have to do like the parents interaction? No, dad's at work. Uh, uh you gonna offer me anything to drink perhaps or? Gwen puts on a, a pot of coffee and she says, I mean, I hope this won't take us all night, but uh, sure, yeah. As you're kind of standing awkwardly in the kitchen as she like fiddles around, you don't know where to go yet. She um, clatters a dish in the sink and then she says, um, you know, Riri, uh, I like to be pretty direct, you know, and like forthcoming, I think is kind of my style. And I mean, I don't think there's going to be a problem with us working on this project together. It's just that like, I need to know, I need to ask you, you seem like a relatively uh, smart, mature person. Why are you helping Anna with her campaign? Oh. I guess that maybe plants the seeds of wanting to forgive Anna because your stark, uh, um, I guess, insults on her makes kind of Riri instantly defensive. Um, that's quite a way to, 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 to start this project. We're getting off on a great foot. Uh, I just want to get it out of the way so we can, like, if we, we can drop it after. Or I guess if you don't want to tell me, you don't have to tell me, but like... I really don't get it, and I want to get it. Anna has a wonderful soul. She has power, a lot of power, and influence. And I find her to be quite charming. I don't know what it is that you... Well, frankly, I don't understand what you don't see in her. That everyone else seems to see. Are you just jealous, Gwen? <laughs> I mean... Would it be nice to be a little rich princess who gets everything she's ever asked for given to her, waited on hand and foot? Yeah, like Riri it would, of course, but I don't think that makes her a good person, and I certainly don't think it makes her charming. I think it makes her the opposite. Well, Gwen, in my experience, I think that we're all coming into who we are, and so none of us is perfect, and while, yes, I will certainly give you that uh, Anna can be perhaps a bit vapid and vain and a little bit self-serving at times, but not to say I think that she, <laughs> I think that she equal parts matches your bluntness. Okay. Um, Gwen sighs and shrugs and she says, call it evenly matched if you want, but one of us has our arm in a sling and I lead you into the living room to get started on the project. I suppose we could just say that, like, yes, we're working on the project, but, like, we can have conversation outside of that, yeah. It's television, baby. Gwen. Yeah, do you need more coffee? No, uh, a question. A penny for your thoughts. <laughs> this is what I talk about. You sound like, like a turn-of-the-century novel. <laughs> Maybe that's just what they sound like in England, I guess. Um, what do you want to know? When I first came here, all you wanted to talk about was Anna and your poor disposition towards her and I, I'm, I'm curious and I mean this with no offense you are to my eyes a very capable individual and I don't understand why it is that you take what you have been gifted and recycle it into vitriol and and hate for others 
I understand if you think that Declan is a, is a better candidate, and he may very well be, but that's up to the democratic process to decide, and so I, I don't see how direct slander is, is, is good, and I'm not saying that we are <laughs> above that. I, I, I just, I don't want to see this talent that I, I see in you squandered and beaten down by the world around you, not to mention the world here is oh so small. She's um, definitely a little embarrassed by this like character analysis. Uh, she like makes a show of like looking at her notebook for an earlier note while she speaks and she says, <laughs> I mean, I guess part of that is fair. I'm stubborn. I'm opinionated, but I don't, I don't think it's, it's coming from a place of vitriol and hate. I think it's, I know it's because I want the world to be a better place. I want our school to be better. This town, I mean, it's shit. It's awful. I want to get out of here as soon as I can. And before I go, I'd like to at least do something to leave a positive impact on it. I want to see the same things too, Gwen. I suppose the only way we differ is on how we approach. And... Well, I suppose that is politics. That's politics. I mean, talk about the democratic process. I'm sure you're well aware of what happened with the newspaper, what Anna does to control how the student body thinks and sees her. You can't call this a fair fight and you can't blame me for doing what I have to to make it as close as I can. I just hope, Gwen, that you realize that we have the same interests and perhaps different ways of approaching it, but I have a lot of respect for you and... Well, I don't know what it'll be like after tonight or after we're done this project, but today, tonight, here and now, I want you to know that I hope you win just as much as I hope we do. Okay, you you want to have this conversation, Riri? You want to have this discussion and like really get into the, the dirt and the dust of it? Do we have the same interests? If you think that we are a noble candidate, if you think that our platform is better, why would you work to undermine that and have the election uh, pass not in our favor? Do you support Anna's campaign, her policy, her points? Or are you just coddling up to the biggest source of power you can find? because that's not what I'm trying to do here. I don't want to hear about how we're the same. Like, it's just, it's fucking bullshit, Riri. It's empty words, and I appreciate them, and they're very flattering, but I don't know that you mean it. Well, Gwen, that's not my problem if you don't think that I mean it. If my... <laughs> <laughs> well, if you want to tell me something, show, like, convince me if you want. And if you don't care, and it's just about whatever playing nice for you, then we can just play nice and do our homework. Are you shutting someone down, Gwen? Yes, she's <laughs> she's like so <laughs> snaky, and it's like she's trying to be like, well, you know, ultimately at the end of the day, like we all have the same interests in mind, and we like categorically don't. And as like a a proto activist, Gwen is like, you're literally just lying to my face with a smile. We're just, like we're all human. Love is love. It's very, it's getting to be a bit that, and I'm like, well, Gwen, that's like Gwen's number when she hates that shit. I'm gonna shut you down. And that one actually works. <laughs> that's a eight. Okay. Choose one from below, but you come across poorly and they give you a condition in return. Oh no, she has strings on me. Yeah. Can I get her to lose that string? Yep. I no longer find you hot. <laughs> Oh. I mean, it is it is a little bit like I, you know, thought maybe you were cool and that you're like, maybe we could be like you're coming into like, maybe we can be friends. And it's like, you're not telling me what I feel like the truth is. So, like, I'm, I'm seeing you as like kind of an ugly souled person at this moment. Yeah. And you have to give Gwen a condition, Riri. I think that's hot headed or fragile then. I think hot headed is more apt. I'm not being like vulnerable. I'm being like annoyed. How's the project going? <laughs> Poorly, I think at this point. I think now I'm in kind of a huff. Uh, well, Gwen, uh, rest assured, I'm not trying to mislead you in any way. And if, if you want to hold that position, that's fine. Uh, I, I, you strike me as very naive, Gwen. What do you do, Dr. Freud? You got me. No, Gwen, I don't have you yet. In three days, though, I very much will. 
Yeah, we still have to prepare um, both of our blood samples, and I have like the glass slide pieces here. Like it's all the stuff that I took out from signed out from the lab is here. Do you? Does your is your blood different as a vamp? Is it like cold as ice? I know what you are. Maybe you just like don't have a blood type because you've been like drinking other people's blood. Blood type, hmm. all of them. Yeah, <laughs> it's really well, perhaps, confusing. Perhaps it's so intermixed or something that like if we go to do it, it's like one like from even the same sample it's like one is you know oh, yeah. one type and then the next test is the different type even though it's the same sample and so perhaps that paints like for the the project you know uh, we, we have neither explain away or like we get a bad grade because it seems like we aren't doing the lab properly because we're getting these like inconsistent results but it's because of my blood well I, I would push and say that like the the in this eight episode campaign that the boiling point is like I am realizing that you're actually a vampire. Yeah, I have to insist that if there is blood in a scene with a vampire, then something needs to happen. Okay, so we are are we like drawing blood then? Yeah. Okay. So um, we finish like the first part of the assignment, all of the like paperwork section, and then I go. Um, well, time for the big show. I'm obviously ill-equipped. Do you mind? Uh, no. And Gwen, I'm sorry. I think it's got a little bit heated there. Yeah, me too. We'll just um, get the paper done, right? Okay. Well, uh, here goes. Just a little prick. I stick my finger in my mouth. I Can I stick your to, finger to... in my mouth? <laughs> <laughs> yeah! You can. So forward, Riri. Well, I'm gonna try and do it really quickly, like, you know, I do it, and then to stop the blood, I just quickly do it, like, for you is the way I'm trying to play it, I guess, essentially. And, like, oh, it's not, like, a weird thing, like, whatever. You know. After Gwen gets her sample taken, they, like, put the sample aside, and then she's like, okay, I'm sorry if I hurt you, I don't really, and she just kind of, like, jabs the, pricks you with the thing, and, like, looks up at you really nervously, like, did it hurt you? Oh. Uh, <laughs> she just says, no, didn't hurt. And again... More more lips than eyes. Noticeably, noticeably, perceivably. Yeah, yeah. Gwen blushes. She takes, like, the little swab to grab the sample, and then she looks at your finger that still has, like, blood drying on it, and she thinks for a second, and then she um, grabs a tissue and sort of, like, cleans it thoroughly for you, but not with her mouth. Oh. Aww. Sorry. Her heart belongs to uh, uh, the ocean, essentially. <laughs> right. Okay, uh, yeah, Gwen, um, Gwen puts the samples into the micro- in, like, no university you be able to rent a microscope from the school <laughs> science lab, but in our universe you can. Um, she puts the, the slides into the microscope, she starts trotting it down, and then she looks at your slide twice, and, yeah, I don't know if you're, like, worried about getting, like, caught or what that means, but you see Gwen, like, do a double take and look again, and then be like, uh, yeah, I, I guess it's uh, AB positive. Uh, I think for narrative interest, it's something like she is still relatively like young vampire that uh, she just. I think she just doesn't know. Okay, um, I look it up and I'm like, well, uh, great. Then we just have to do the analysis section, which we can do uh, like Wednesday, Thursday in class. I think they said they would give us time, and if not, we can just meet up on the afternoon somewhere and just finish it up. You're going to see in class tomorrow, lab partner. Okay, Riri leaves, perhaps with one final lingering look at uh, Gwen's beautiful lips, and with the taste of her magical blood with the in taste your mouth. Of your magical no. Yeah, and I run back to the microscope, and I look again, and then again, and then again, and I'm like, that was three different answers, holy shit. And I just stand up in my um, living room, and I'm like... She's actually a fucking vampire. Thank you, as always, for checking out another episode of Recount. This is the halfway mark. Who do you think is going to win? Lead us your predictions. And now is the part of the show where I ask you for money. We are trying to hire a transcriber, but we need funds to pay them. So if you like what we do and want to support us, consider donating some dollars to Coffee or Patreon. Links in the show notes. We will be doing another Patreon-exclusive one-shot soon, which all tiers have access to. So if you crave that bonus content, we've got you covered. Especially if you want a character named after you in our next series of one-shots. Just think about it. 
Anyway, we'll be back in two weeks with one of my favorite episodes from this season. Stay tuned.